Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Backwood Solar YouTube video. In today's video, we're going to be covering the basics of solar panels. This includes sizing, position, and maintenance. Stay tuned. We're going to start today's video talking about calculating the size of a solar array. This can be a new array or an existing array. Principle remains the same. This math example we're about to go over is found on our website under our solar sizing tab in our learning center. So don't get overwhelmed by the numbers. All this math will be there. It's just a rough example, our general idea on sizing solar. If we're sizing this solar array for a new installation, the first thing we need to do is determine how much power are we using every day. On our website under our learning center, we do have an AC-DC load calculation sheet that I would encourage you to use. Running through our load calculation sheet should give you a fairly good idea of what you're consuming. And by using that number, let's assume here for this example that you're consuming about 10 kilowatt hours a day or 10,000 watt hours. We can use that to then calculate or estimate the size of our solar array. So using that 10,000 watt hours or 10 kilowatt hours, First thing we have to figure is how many hours in a day does the average solar panel produce power. For this number, we typically are going to use a five hour production window. Again, this may be high, highly variable depending on your site and location, your latitude and so on, seasonality of course. But most of the time here we're going to be using a five hour multiplier. So given that 10,000 watt hours or 10 kilowatt hours, we're going to divide by five hours of production. That would mean to get five hours of production making 10,000 watt hours, we would need 2,000 watts of solar total. This number assumes 100% efficiency, which doesn't happen in the real world. So if we take that 2,000 watts, we're gonna use a 1.5 multiplier for expected efficiency losses. This would be wire losses, cabling, equipment, so on and so forth. So using that 2,000 watts with our efficiency loss, we would now need a 3000 watt array to produce that 10,000 watt hours or 10 kilowatt hours. However, we have one other factor we need to take into consideration here. This is regionality and apart with the regionality, some seasonality as well. So here in our example, if we have that 3000 watt hour array or excuse me, a 3000 watt array and we're here in North Idaho, we're gonna add 60% of loss to that assuming relatively poor winter conditions and short winter days. So again, if we take that 3000 watts, multiply it by 1.6 or 60%, we're gonna find out to produce that 10K, 10 kilowatt hours here in North Idaho, we would need an array size of about 4,800 watts. After we have sized our solar array, the next consideration would be the site selection or the placement of the panels. This would include the orientation, the azimuth, the direction that the panels are facing, as well as the angle, the panel angle to the sun. When choosing your site, it's very important to consider the solar position throughout the entire year, not just that time of year when you're choosing the site. This, of course, would take into consideration the use case for your project. It obviously, as if this is a seasonal cabin and we're only concerned with seasonal use or summer use, then we're only concerned with production during that period. If this is a year-round residence, then ensuring solar position throughout the year is an important thing to consider. A lot of people don't have the luxury of being at a site for a full year to see solar position. So there are some nice apps out there that allow you to mimic or virtually view the position of the sun throughout the solar calendar. So those can be quite helpful for determining solar site position. Those apps can be particularly helpful, especially for when considering a low sun angle in the winter and your site, maybe you have trees or mountains that may come into play here. Otherwise, it just gives you a good general idea of sun position throughout all 12 months. The next thing to discuss would be solar panel angle. This mostly relates to your latitude or location's latitude. For most North American customers, winter production is reduced from summer solar production. So setting and leaving your panels closer to the winter optimal angle is usually the preferred. In terms of rough uh, solar angle, 
for most North American customers using the latitude, your site's latitude, so in degrees, so let's say 39 degrees, using that 39 degree latitude would also be an equivalent solar panel angle for most applications. Of course, again, depending on site, times of the year when you're hoping to maximize production, that may change. Also, of course, if you utilize a solar array that is seasonally or angle adjustable, you have the luxury or option of adjusting that array for optimal solar panel angle and optimal production. But if not, generally leaving it toward the steeper winter angle is the ideal position. Another commonly asked question we get is about solar panel trackers. Solar panel trackers, at least historically, were a very common item for a lot of off-grid residences. Solar panel trackers now in 2025 have kind of lost a lot of use, mainly due to the fact that solar panel costs have come down so dramatically. In the case of solar trackers, most solar trackers would gain a site about a 15% production increase by tracking or following the sun at a relatively hefty cost, several thousand dollar cost to tilt that array toward the sun. With panel solar panel pricing today, it's usually cheaper or it is cheaper just to over panel by 15 or 20% and not track the sun. You end up with the same amount of production, but at a less cost with less maintenance and less moving parts. The last thing to mention in terms of site selection would be if your site has to deal with any shading occurring throughout the day. In some cases, we don't have an optimal site for our solar panel placement and we do have to deal with some minor, maybe branch shading or other types of shading occurring throughout the day. Obviously, it's more ideal to have as consistent equal exposure as possible, but if we do have to deal with some branch shading, there are some things we can do to minimize the negative effects. This is something we can talk about specifically depending on site and there's quite a few different ways of mitigating these losses. But primarily we're gonna to try to minimize solar string length. So if we do get any shading or efficiency losses, it's isolated to smaller groups, as well as the choice of solar panel type also may be helpful in this case. Certain types of solar cells collect light under more shaded conditions or under cloudier conditions, or maybe we'll choose a bifacial type solar panel, which gives some pretty dramatic benefits under specific conditions. The last thing we're gonna talk about today is solar panel maintenance, which will vary in frequency depending on your site and location. Really the first thing to discuss when talking about maintaining solar panels is probably where you've mounted the solar panels to begin with or the type of racking you've used. Certainly a ground mount or a post mount is easier to maintain than a roof mount would be purely because of ease of access and reach. So if you're in a location that gets a lot of snow or maybe a coastal area that deals with a lot of ocean spray, salt spray, a ground or a post mount is certainly easier to maintain day to day versus a roof mount. Uh, however, on any of these mounts, in terms of cleaning the panels, most of the time all we would recommend is soap and water, maybe a mop uh, or a sponge and a squeegee to clean off the solar panel surface. Beyond that, beyond soap and water, we generally don't recommend harsh chemicals, anything else, unless we have some kind of dramatic buildup on the panel, maybe a uh, pine sap or some other residue that just is not uh, able to re be removed with soap and water alone. If you do have some kind of heavier buildup in your panels that isn't removed by soap and water, I would have you defer to the manufacturer's spec sheet or manual on proper cleaning procedures for that particular panel. I would generally, however, just recommend using soap and water if at all possible. This is mainly not to protect the glass, it is to protect any types of anti-reflective coatings that may be put on the glass to help with solar panel efficiency and transmission. Overall, the glass itself is not overly sensitive, but we do wanna protect any of these coatings that the manufacturer may have on the panels. Backwood Solar is America's oldest and most trusted solar retailer with nearly 50 years of experience. Head over to our website, backwoodsolar.com, to get a free copy of our planning guide while you're there, check out our Learning Center with articles on setup, sizing, tax credits, and so much more helpful information, especially if you're just getting started with solar. There are also links provided in the description.